to go ahead and, you know, and really saw the impact that the guidelines that, you know, nationally, uh, the impact that it was having on our population, which is what, where we are today. A lot of us are dealing with conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes. high cholesterol, diabetes, blood cancer, right, Alzheimer's, lifestyle. These, these are some of the examples of the national health epidemic that we are experiencing today and have been for the past couple of decades, and it's on the rise. You know, we didn't, the, the amount of the chronic illness and disease that we see today, it didn't exist, even like 50 years ago. It has, in, it has been exponentially increasing, okay, over the last 50 decades. Uh, I mean, last five decades, <laughs> five decades. <laughs> you know, uh, really from the 40s on, uh, with the advent of industrialized commercial food that we see, 
we've seen a rise in conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cancer, diabetes, right? Um, MS, which is multiple sclerosis. I mean, there's like so many. These are all conditions that can actually be prevented, okay? And if you have it, it can actually be reversed. Okay, we know it. The research has shown that it speaks for itself when we start to integrate healing foods into our body. Okay, and so that's what we're going to talk about today, is what are the healing foods, you know? And what makes a food have <coughs> healing components, okay? I believe, you know, Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has given everything that we need on this planet to keep ourselves really healthy, you know? And, thank you. And to help us, and to help us, uh, if we do contract something, to help us to heal that. You know, if we go to the right sources, if we go to the right foods, okay. And but what's going on is that we see that there's been so much misinformation out there. You know, especially if you're going on the internet to find health information, it's very contradicting. You're gonna find information that's from one side of the spectrum to the other, and they contradict each other. It's like one thing, you know, one information is saying, you know, eat more of this, and the other information is saying, no, eat less of this. The same thing, you know, eat, have more milk, no, have, don't have milk, right? Or have more, what's another one, have more soy, or no, don't have more soy, right? There's so much contradicting information out there. So my job today is for you, uh, for, for me to help you basically bust out of the contradicting information that's out there and go to the basics of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually given us already and just get very clear, okay? And really, what I'm gonna, uh, what my goal is to really help you to transform your relationship with food forever, okay? And so that you get so clear that you don't have to get caught up with the, all the contradicting and the conflicting information on the nutrition that is out there. Okay, how does that sound? Oh, uh, wait. Yes. 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 Okay, so I want to hear from you guys. What are some things, health-wise, that you have been trying to address in your life, in your you know, in your day-to-day -day life, that you've been struggling with? If you want to share, you're welcome to. You don't have to. So anybody want to share? Anything around your health and you know, your physical health that you've been wanting to address or that you've been struggling with? Who's waiting? Okay, yeah, we see that a lot. Borderline Border. We'll talk about that today too. What else? Yeah, we have stiff joints. Stiff joints, yes, we'll talk about that as well. Like uh, joint health, you know, joint conditions, aches and pains, high blood pressure. High blood pressure. A lot of us are dealing with that. And the joint. Heel, like as in the back. Okay. Pressure. Um, and thyroid. 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 Okay. Yes. Thyroid, uh, which is connected to the moral system, which is connected to metabolism and all of that. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah. Memory. 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 Oh, Brain that's function. A big one. <laughs> Huge. We'll talk about that. Yes. Sleeping. Sleeping. Right? Rest. The nervous system, which is very much connected to our ability um, um, ability to relax and have those relaxing hormones, you know, be present in our body, which is connected to, again, thyroid, which is connected to weight, you know, it, it, all of it is connected. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and move it, move forward. So again, thank you for taking the time to be here. Stayed up too late, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and move forward. So, I'm really excited to be having this conversation with you guys. I know the past couple of conferences we've had been talking about all kinds of other political issues, but those are um, those are the that's the kind of work I used to do before I started doing this work. What happened is when I started doing the organizing, I saw a lot of organizers just pouring out their health, you know, impact, <coughs> being impacted in a negative way, and then not being able to really organize it effectively because they were getting sick so often, you know, or didn't have enough energy. And, you know, organizing takes a lot of, you know, takes a lot of our mind. It takes a lot of our attention. It takes a lot of 
our time and our energy <coughs> to this, this work. We run around, <coughs> visit our loved one in prison, and then also work at home, and then take care of our family. It just takes so much energy. And, um, and it requires us to be on our best health, you know? And so what I decided is that, you know, I wanted, you know, I had to figure it out myself because, uh, in, in terms of sustainability, like how do we sustain ourselves? Right, for the long haul, for the long journey, you know, for both to be able to support our loved one and be, you know, running around like we need to do, but also just for our own health, you know, for longevity. And how do we live long term in a way that's quality and we don't have to be the grips of the high blood pressure, the cholesterol, and then like have our health kind of draw, you know, like pull us back, right? A lot of us you know, kind of struggle with our health and our body is holding us back when we know it could be so much better, right? You know it could be so much better. And so my goal is to show you like what direction to go into in terms of your food and your nutrition so that you can start to turn the clock back around and, and bring energy, bring sustainability into your body, into your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the next slide. Next. Okay, so just a little disclaimer. I'm not a medical physician, which I know. Um, so I'm not here to show you how to treat any disease or not. not I would still recommend that you go to your physician for that. Um, nor do I want to you know, dispense any medical advice. Uh, my job is to share really grounded, amazing, quality information that's going to support you with making the right choices around your food. Okay, that's going to help you to have more energy. It's going to help you to address some of the health concerns that you might be having, balance your body, balance your hormones, balance your, really in, increase the function of your immune system. Okay, so your immune system can do what it's supposed to do. You know, support your thyroid, so your thyroid can do what it's supposed to do, because all it's going to do is make this body in a brilliant way, right? It knows what to do already. We just have to give it what it needs and not give it what it doesn't need, right? Next. Okay, so <clears throat> so this is really what I do on my day-to-day -day job. Um, so I'm a certified cooking instructor and nutrition consultant, certified by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. This is a nonprofit organization. Actually, they're based out of DC. They're a national organization, and they are looking at it's a it's an organization, nonprofit that's um, a combination of doctors, nurse practitioners, dietitians, other you know, uh, lay people like us um, who are really looking at how do we reverse conditions, prevent conditions like diabetes, heart disease, um, the chronic illness and disease that is so rampant in our society right now. Yeah. Uh, and then also certified by the American Institute of Nurse Nurse Practitioners who are certifying practitioners that do not use pharmaceuticals, uh, that do not want to use pharmaceuticals. You know, like, you know, I believe that food can be medicine if we use it that way. Okay, but a lot of times what we're doing food is uh, what we're doing with food is that we're using it for all kinds of other purposes. And you know, we're using it for coping, we're using it for socialization, we're using it for entertainment, you know. And that's fine, but it's like to the degree in which we use it, you know, and are we use and how much of the food that we're eating and getting into this body, how much is it actually has healing components and how much does it have anti healing components? Does that make sense? So that's my website, you can look that up later. Next. Okay, so we talked, we kind of already started talking about this. So here you see, you know, a lot of us are dealing with chronic lack of energy, and we think we've been dealing with it for so many years that we've become accustomed to it. We think that by the mid-afternoon, oh, it's okay, it's normal to be tired, you know. Or early evening, five o'clock, six o'clock, it's okay to be tired. Or you know, by the time 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock rolls around, we're <coughs> exhausted and we think it's normal. None of that is normal. You know, all of that is because your body is being deprived of the proper nutrients that it really needs. Okay. <coughs> so frequent cold and flu is, how, how many of us, and you don't have to raise your hands, but if you're somebody who's <coughs> getting sick once or twice a year, at least, okay, like runny nose, cough, you know, congestion, fever, maybe flu, if you're somebody who's getting the flu every year, like during the season, you know, um, we think culturally and societally we've come to see that as normal. It's actually not. 
it, it happens because our immune system is functioning at a low level, and, the, and it's chronic. Our immune system is chronically at a low level, and therefore we get sick on an annual basis or biannually. I have not gotten sick in over eight, nine years. And that's because my immune system knows how to, you know, I, I give it so much, and I've, I've never taken a flu shot. Okay. Um, that's because it's just about equipping your immune system with what it needs so that it can do its job. It will protect you. Allah will protect you because you're getting what Allah has meant for your body. Period. You know? It's when we deviate from what we're supposed to give this body that we start to deviate. Really deviate from what Allah means for this body, right? So if you're dealing with asthma, you know, allergies, seasonal, even seasonal allergies. That's actually one of my big things. I got I, I, I healed myself of seasonal allergies just by doing some nutritional things, which we can talk a little bit later about. Congestion, weakness, and you know, headaches, chronic. And these are, I'm talking chronic, okay? I'm not talking just once in a while. Like every some years or chronic. Um, so chronically, if you're dealing with these like on a regular basis, you know, then there's something going on. That's your body telling you something's off. You know, we're not supposed to deal with any of this chronically. None of these. Even in in our el you know, older age, our age, even when you're sixties and seventies, really we're not supposed to. I've I've worked with clients, I've seen I've seen and heard so many testimonies of I mean you probably have too, you know, uh, men and women in their seventies, eighties who don't deal with this because they can be clean and happy most of their life. You know? Of course. The chronic stuff, right? High cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, these are all you know, inflammatory conditions. And so we'll talk a lot more about that. Let's go to the next slide. Actually, can we go back? Can we go back? Anything else you guys want to add to this? Yes. I think the thing that I notice more, most about people uh, talking to me about the problems is, is inability to sleep at night. And I think yeah, lack of sleep mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. also connected somehow with immune problems and all of that sort of stuff because I think that's when the body kind of re refreshes itself absolutely. for all of those things that are up there. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so we could say, you know, lack of sleep or literally like sleep issues. There's so many, even within the category of sleep, there's all kinds of other things. That's right. It's a whole pyramid it's of, whole, yeah, right. it kind of reflects every one of those things. Right, right. Yeah. Lack of sleep will <coughs> contribute to or lack of adequate rest. Okay, lack of adequate rest will contribute to uh, immune system de deficiency or de dysfunction, you know, especially if it's chronic. So let's go to the next one. <coughs> okay, so, you know, I'm somebody who really believes in, you know, let's eat to live, you know. Um, so today's conversation is going to focus on, you know, what foods help the body feel its best all day. Every day, every moment, okay, um, without the use of caffeine, artificial stuff, basically, and, and unnecessary gifts. You know, a lot of so many companies want to get us in battle. How to create a balanced, <coughs> quality meal to help you reach and maintain your body's ideal weight and steady level of energy. So we're looking at, you know, what are the quality foods that you want to eat more of. We'll talk about that. And then, and then, how do you take some of these foods most you know, conveniently available to you and it's, you know, accessible? Um, you know, a lot of us sometimes think that you know, health, eating healthy is it takes so much work, or it's you know, it's too you know, it's it's not available and whatnot. So today, I'm going to show you how to make it available, how to make it easy and convenient and quick. So when they tell you a piece of dark chocolate or a cup of coffee a day is good for the heart. Is this all among the gimmicks and the games they play on us or wanting yeah. to market these products? It, it, yes, there's a lot of that. It's a lot of marketing gimmicks that are out there. Um, and also, it also kind of depends on who they're talking to, you know. So not one thing works for everybody the same. Okay, everybody's made differently. Your body is different than mine. You know, a man's body is different than mine. I'm gonna have a different body than than um, Rihanna over there with a the child. You know, and then if you're working out based on your physical activity, how active you are, your nutrition will vary. You know, versus somebody who's working in front of a computer, you know, hours a day or something. You know, or somebody who's working in construction. You know, out, out and about. 
all day long versus somebody who's you know working at home. They, they, you know, so your energy level, your body, your work, how much we're using our body, all of that influences what we should be eating and what we should not be eating. So it always depends. So coming back to what you're saying, you know, um, a cup of coffee, you know, so it's not too bad for me. There's more research. There's more research that says that even a cup of coffee a day will shut down the adrenal, the adrenal system, you know, which then has a ripple effect, negative, negative effect on the body. And so, yeah, it may be, you know, at some level, good for somebody who's got huge cholesterol and high blood pressure. What? Well, not even blood pressure, because that will not be good for somebody who's got blood pressure. Um, but cholesterol, you know, you know. I don't, there might be some research that says, but then there, you gotta look at the other research that says, well, it actually stresses the body on the long run, you know, and the adrenal system and the hormonal system. And that applies so, to, to tea, it applies to? Not all tea, not all, not all tea, but we can, we'll talk about okay. that. You know I mean, you know. All right. So let's go to the next. <laughs> okay, so this is really where we're gonna, the one, one way to, bust out of these contradicting and these conflicting you know, information that we hear in the media is to go to the basics. Basics, you want to start to look at and understand the qualities, the acid alkaline and the inflammatory qualities of each food that you put in your mouth. If you can just understand what, how to distinguish you know, how acidic something is or how alkaline something is, you will know for yourself what choices to make. And that's what this present, today's conversation is going to be focusing on. <clears throat> that's how I decide you know, what food is going to be good for me. Because it, it, wants to, and it, takes a, it takes a time for you to kind of get used to uh, distinguishing those foods. You know? Like, is this going to be inflammatory or not? And I'm going to guide you through how to distinguish that today. That's going to be the bulk majority of our conversation. So once you learn that, you're going to be good to go. You might not have to go to somebody else. You're going to, you're going to know all of that for yourself. You know, you're going to be equipped with that. And that's really what I want to do. I'm going to help you to transform your entire relationship with food. Let's go to the next one. So, uh, Sister Salma yesterday talked a bit about this. You know, we are all in this room right now because of everything. And not just because of what's happened, but maybe even before in our life. Uh, we're dealing with chronic stress. You know, it's, and we are learning to thrive in it. You know, we're learning to swim in it, you know, with everything that's happening with our loved one. Uh, but chronic stress has a havoc on the body. Because, you know, we're constantly, and this influences our ability to sleep. This influences our appetite. It influences our thyroid. It influences our, our metabolism. It influences all of it. Because uh, in a chronic stress, there's a stress hormone called cortisol. Have you guys heard of that? Okay. Okay, now, when, when we are stressed, the body releases this chemical called cortisol, okay? And that's just one of the several that are out there, but that's the one of the most common, and it's one of the most um, damaging to the body if it's pumping, you know, uh, in our system on a regular basis. And so that's what practices like yoga, practices like working out, and visualization, those kind of practices help to minimize <coughs> the stress <coughs> Bloodstream. <coughs> Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why it's so important for us to, you know, and, and, and in the prayer and all of that, support and, and socializing, having fun, all of that minimizes cortisol from being circulated in our bloodstream. So that's what we want to do. We want to take the time to make sure that we are taking and having fun and doing these other, you know, health, healthy practices so that we don't, so we can minimize the, the, uh, stress hormones that circulate in our bloodstream. Okay. That, again, rest, right? Making sure you take some time out to rest. Let's go next. Again, another way that people relax, you know? Next. I'm not gonna go through it. Poor gut health. Um, this is connected to maybe a lot of nutrition and stress. So I don't know if you guys know, but you guys have heard the expression, I have a gut feeling. Right, the gut feeling. Now, did you know that we have more? Do you guys know what neurotransmitters are? <coughs> neurotransmitters. There, the neurotransmitters are mostly associated with the brain because neurotransmitters is what helps us connect our thoughts. You know, from one thought to the next. You know, it makes 
it makes our brain function. You know, it, 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 it's, the, it's the chemical that, come at, that is, it's a brain chemical basically, and that makes everything. We have hundreds and gazillions of neurotransmitters in our brain. You know, without neurotransmitters, I cannot say one word. You know, mm -hmm. it, it is what makes this entire system, you know, function. And so, um, the neurotransmitters, I mean, that's mainly in our brain, right? But guess what? More neurotransmitters are actually in our gut, which is why we say the gut feeling. You know, somebody, you know, all this instinctual, you know, when you get nervous and you get the butterflies, or, you know, your body, kind of, your belly kind of feels a little queasy, or, you know, um, and so all of that. It's because there's this right here in the nutrition world. We call this the second brain. Our digestive system is the second brain, okay? And that's why a lot of times when we start to feel nervous or whatever, we feel it down here too. You know, that's why. Okay. And so what we want to do is we start to look at what can we eat. Because when we eat, it's, it's going directly into our digestive system. So what can we eat that's going to help to soothe this brain and not stress this out, right? <coughs> We're already dealing with stress from the world here, right? And so, but let's not stress this out because it, you know this is where the food is going. And so, the food that we eat, you know, ought to be soothing, healing, right? High quality, nutrient dense foods. Um, so, let's go to the next one. We already talked about that. Let's go to the next one. Um, again, you know, poor lack of sleep. Now, we already, maybe you guys have learned this already, that sleep. When we sleep. You know, we have different stages in our sleep. You know that, right? There are four stages. And that healing happens at not all the stages. There's a particular stage. If you get to the, the deep level, the, the third and the fourth stage, that's where the physical healing actually starts to happen. Because at that stage, the brain starts to release particular chemicals. Okay, unless you get to that stage, your brain won't release those chemicals. So a lot of times, if you're having a disruption in your sleep, if you're having, if you're waking up throughout the night, or you're you're just not getting enough sleep because you have to wake up early, you went to sleep late, you gotta wake up early. You know, some of us are you know going to sleep two o'clock, you know, two o'clock in the morning, waking up at five to prayer. You know, if you're if that's happening on a regular basis, guess what? We're depriving the body of the necessary stages where the healing can happen. Okay. And in that stage, the third and the fourth stage, is where the releasing of our growth hormones happen, our relaxation hormones happen. Okay, and without those stages, those chemicals are not being released. You know, and those are also the chemicals that help us that are help us with longevity. It's anti-aging. Okay, they're called growth, growth hormones. And so that's why it's so important. Now, if we're depriving or we're just not going to sleep properly. Um, we want to start to look at and ask the questions. Okay, well, what will help us? What do we? What adjustments do I need to make so that I can start to have a good night rest? Say that Eleven to one. Eleven to one is the time when body releases these things. Well, there's no time. There's really no time because everybody's got now different lifestyles, so it really kind of depends on your own lifestyle cycle. You know, yes, there is this relationship with the sun and the moon that we have. Um, as, as just na natural beings, um, but then that's compounded with our own individual lifestyle. You know, because if you're, if you're somebody who's sleeping in later, you know, so your your you know, timing might be a little bit different. It may not be just 11 to 1. It may be 1 to 2, you know, or 8 to 11. So it just, but it is around that time frame. So it's not that strict, basically. Um, let's go. So here we go. So. My work with you today is going to focus on this aspect. Okay, we can talk all day long about these and these are like workshops on itself, you know, but our, our time is going to be based on this. When we look at the things that are, in, you know, that increase inflammation, okay, these are all the things that, you know, contribute to inflammation. But my, my talk today and this conversation today is going to focus on the food, the nutrition, and the diet aspects of that contributes to inflammation. So we're looking at high sugar food, high processed foods, carbs, high industrial fat, that means that we find bottled oils, okay, um, or shortenings, or 
butter or I mean, what's that um, Costco kind of stuff? You know, all of that is uh, considered industrial fat. Um, high gluten, okay, like a lot of breads and crackers and cupcakes, and you know, those are high gluten, especially if it's made with rye or uh, wheat. High meat, okay, <coughs> low fiber foods. So it's a pretty accurate description of the modern diet. You know, as you can see, this is a lot of what we're eating nowadays. And a lot of what we're eating nowadays are inflammatory. As, as a community, as a population, as a country, most of our food nowadays are disposed. And guess what? No wonder we're dealing with, guess what? A nation full of people that are dealing with inflammatory conditions like we've been talking about. Because we're eating, you know, most of us are eating this way, we're going to get those things. You know, it's just, that's what, you know, that's what happens next. So let's look at what do we mean by inflammation, okay? Uh, here's, here's the scientific definition. So I'll let you read that um, a little bit and then highlight. I'm going to highlight some key words out of here. That's <laughs> It's just not it's what's supposed to happen, right? It's not supposed to happen. Um, a pathologic process consisting of dynamic compound historical uh, <coughs> cytologic. <coughs> what do you mean by that? Anybody a biology major here? And histologically, what's that? <laughs> histologically means chronic. Chronic. Yeah. So like that's so chronic. <laughs> it's not scientific enough. <laughs> but there is a particular way that they define that and the process that they're referring to. But cytologic means cellular, basically. Cellular, you know, cells. Cellular inflammation. Um, maybe, okay, so let's look at abnormal stimulation, meaning it's not supposed to happen. That kind of stimulation in the cell is just not supposed to happen. Okay, but it's happening. Let's go back. So basically, anything, here's the translation, anything that disrupts cellular integrity. Okay, we're, we, you know, Alasmona created this body, created the cells, the DNA, and everything, right? Created in a particular way. When a baby comes into this world, our baby is in usually in a great health. And I was about to, I was about to do a specific um, mechanical, some sort of a disability, but other than that, you know, we're, we're created with everything in being in integrity, you know? What happens is that once we start to live life, you know, even as babies and infants, a lot of us are, lot of us are giving our babies inflammatory foods, you know? And so the baby starts to grow up in a condition and have infections and have asthma or allergies or whatnot, right? Like all of that really are not supposed to happen, okay? So, but once we start to give the body inflammatory things, it's going to have inflammatory symptoms. Okay, so that's what's going on. Um, so anything that disrupts cellular integrity and the process of the cellular, okay? So let's go back. <coughs> Next. You got it, okay. So almost all the foods that we eat after being digested, absorbed, and metabolized in our body, release either an acidic or an alkaline base in our blood. And has anyone heard of this acid-alkaline kind of relationship? Right? All right. Um, there's all kinds of information out there, but I'm going to make it very simple for you guys. What it is is that if you can think about, um, you know when we drive a car, and you put oil in the car, and then you drive and drive and drive. Okay and the car is giving up exhaust, right? It's leaving behind the ash, kind of, if you will. Or say you have a piece of paper and you burn it, and it leaves behind an ash. Okay, the burning is the metabolism. Meta if you can think about it, it's an anal analogy. The burning is, is using the paper as a fuel, right? <coughs> and then it leaves behind an ash. Um, so anything that we eat, okay, anything that we eat, the body uses it, 
it metabolizes it, and the body too kind of leaves behind a little bit of an ash, okay? And that ash gets, in our, it is in our system already, and it, but then it gets circulated in our blood. Okay, now, there are foods that we are consuming on a regular basis. Anything that we put inside this mouth, okay? And if anything that goes down our esophagus, goes into our stomach, and gets into our intestines, and all that, everything, okay, we eat, also lives behind an ash. But certain foods have more ash than other foods. Do you want more ash or less ash? Less, less. <laughs> okay. So, and it's kind of like carbon print, right? We talk about green sustainability and all of that these days. So you want to leave behind the, leaf, the least amount of what? Carbon, right? Carbon print, yeah. So we want to be as efficient with our fuel and our utilization of everything. So same thing. We want food is what? For the human body, the mechanical of this body, physiology. Food is what? Fuel. It's fuel. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's just fuel. And so we want to take in fuel that's going to leave behind the least amount of carbon print. Make sense? Pretty easy, right? Okay, so now the question is, okay, well, what do we eat? What do we eat that is going to be, that will leave behind the least amount of carbon print in our body? Because this body, is, it's, it's its own ecology, if you will, right? It's its own environment. It's its own, it has its own forest. It has its own, you know, it's, it's a planet of in itself, right? And so we want to eat the foods that has the least amount of um, ash, basically. So the way to the way we talk about it in the nutrition world is we say acid alkaline. If something is if something has more ash, if you eat it, it's going to leave behind more ash, more gunk, if you will. We call it acidic. If something you eat that's going to leave behind clean, right, clean environment in your body, in your bloodstream, it's alkaline. Make sense? Okay. Okay, so acidic foods. Now let's talk about the stuff that leaves behind the most ash. Okay, they, when there's so much ash moving through the body, okay, and it's circulating because of the foods that we're eating, it decreases the body's ability to absorb <coughs> minerals and other nutrients. Okay, basically, if you can think about it, on the planet, if you we've used so much inefficient fuel and it's you know leaving behind so much ash and smoke and smog, what's going on? cloudy, it's foggy, the breathing makes it hard, like uh, it contributes to all kinds of stuff, right? Um, it disrupts the process of how it's really supposed to be in this environment, in this beautiful nature, right? Same thing. So if you've clogged up, if we've clogged up our system with all this ash, it's not going to, the body's not, it's going to have traffic, it's going to have competition. Uh, it's not going to be able to absorb the nutrients. You see that? Because it's, it's being clogged up with all the ash, right? Decrease the body's energy production in the cells. There's so much science that goes into this. This right here is another 30 minute conversation. But uh, to make it simple, basically, our cells, uh, we have how many cells in the body? Nine trillion. Than a billion, trillion, trillions, right? And there's different cells for different functions, right? We have brain cells. We have skin cells, we have digestive cells, we have you know, just bone cells. And every, every cell is designed to carry out a particular function, right? right? Brain cells carry out brain function, right? skin cells, you know, digestive cells, you know, they all do different things. And the cells are already designed. Do you have to tell your cell what to do? No, automatically. Huh? <coughs> it does it, it yeah. knows it, right? This body's already created, it does it. And so we don't have to tell it to do what it needs to do. It's the smallest, it is the smallest unit of intelligence in the body, right? It knows what it's supposed to do, you don't have to tell it, right? Our, our, we, our mind is intelligent in its own way, but the cell is too, whether we realize, you know, whether we want to, you know, recognize it or not. And so the cell, what it does is it, it has so much going on in the cells. We learned this in elementary school, middle school, high school, right, in our biology class. Cells have receptor cells, they have, they have walls and layers, and then they're constantly communicating with one another. 
they are um, also like they get taken or taken or you know and so there's good cells and there's bad cells and we, we, we learn all of that but it decreases the function for activity because there's just clogged up the mesh so let's go to the next one the cells are also designed to heal themselves right and so they will mm -hmm. repair you know it will I mean it will uh, decrease its ability to repair itself and it's a talks about heavy metals and stuff like that, which we are breathing in. If you're in New York, <laughs> places like really high traffic or you're in the city, we're breathing in heavy metals a lot from the, the vehicles, you know, industrial air and all of that. Um, and sometimes it's even in our foods, you know, if we're using aluminum foil or if we're using aluminum pot, uh, pots and pans, it's getting into our food. Um, so many ways we're we're taking in heavy metals. If a fish, a lot of times nowadays, has heavy metal in them. So, um, make sure what else you know. So, body needs to fight, and it collects. It 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 sends all the toxic cells, and just because body is always trying to heal itself, right? And so it sends all the toxic stuff in a corner, which then accumulate into a lot of times tumor and whatnot, or cancer, whatever you, know, you want to say. Make it sustainable. Fatigue and illness. Okay. One of the best things that we can do to correct an overly acidic body is to clean up the diet and lifestyle. Makes sense, right? So it's really clean. To maintain health and eating style should consider 60%. So to maintain health. So in other words, if you're pretty, you know, you consider yourself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm pretty healthy and I'm satisfied with where I'm at with my body and my health and my immune system, my hormonal system. All of that, my digestive system functions great. I go to the bathroom twice, twice a day, and you know it's it's firm and it's you know healthy looking. So if you're maintaining, then this is good. However, if you're wanting to prevent uh, or I mean um, revert something and intervene on certain conditions, whether it be high cholesterol, diabetes, or you're getting sick, you know once or twice a year, and you know your immune system needs to be made better. You know, you're dealing with cancer, or you're dealing with uh, pre-diabetic conditions, or oh no, there's so much going on, or brain function is slow or foggy or whatnot, you know, and it's chronic. I'm talking about chronic conditions. We want to start to do 80 to 100% clean. 100%, let me talk a little bit about that a little bit later, but 80%, definitely. I'm at an 80%, because I don't, I, we, my family, my, um, both my father and my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, you know, they're, she, I've grown up with seeing her struggle with diabetes all her life. And I know that I'm predisposed for di you know, diabetes. And so I'm here. I want to prevent diabetes. I don't want to have to deal with it, <laughs> you know, when I get to be 50, 60 years old. So I'm here, you know. But if we're already dealing with some chronic, deep issues, health issues, and if you go to a natural doctor, a naturopath, or there's all kinds of now, nowadays, great natural treatment centers, they put everybody on 100% alkaline, okay? Um, and I'm not talking the medical stuff, I'm talking like natural medicine, okay? Um, they put them, and, and, and sometimes I'll do that with some clients that I work with as well, depending on what they're dealing with, but, but that's to restore your health back to where it's supposed to be, and it's totally possible, completely possible. <coughs> it's gonna take some time and some effort, okay? Let's go to the next one. Okay, so some of the organizations, just for your resource purposes, um, PCRM is the organization I already mentioned earlier, um, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They're showing and teaching people, and there might be classes going on in your state, in your city. Uh, there's instructors like myself that are doing healthy cooking classes. We're actually gonna get to see a little bit of it today. Um, the website where you can find great recipes is nutritionmd.org, okay? And then my website, and then, yeah, we already talked about that. So let's go to the next one. Okay, demo time. <laughs> let's do it. All right. So you guys ready? Yeah. Have some fun? So the rest of the session we're going to do some hands-on stuff. You're going to get to see what these some of these foods are, how to make them, how to have fun with them, where to get them. What else? What, what else do you guys want to know? Now, I want to know the, the 
does, it, uh, does that mean meat and chicken and fish and uh, uh, and the list? The list? You're not telling us that, are you? Well, I don't tell people what to do. I am here to show you what kind of food just is going to be best for your body. Okay, you make the choices at the end of the day because your body is designed to have a particular nutrient and not designed to have toxicity. It's just not right. We already talked about the acid alkaline. Right? Your our body thrives best when it's getting what kind of foods? And it degenerates in what kind of foods? It's not me saying that. It's not me saying that I wish, you know? <laughs> so I, I I I if I was the creator, then maybe I'm not the creator. <laughs> I can't say that. Um I do wanna you guys see this though, right? <coughs> These are the foods that are most alkaline in the body. This is the power, and that's why it's called the power plate. We see fruits, legumes. What are legumes, guys? <coughs> what kind of vegetables? Uh, what's not beans, 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 lentils? Beans. beans. What else? Beans. Lentils. Lentils. And two more. Any other kinds of nuts? Nuts and seeds. Got it. Okay? Nuts and seeds. So beans, lentils, nuts, and seeds, legumes. Those are all legumes. Basically anything that's like a little seed. <laughs> okay, and then vegetables. Okay, any vegetables from sweet potatoes to kale greens to what? Tomatoes, or not tomatoes are fruit, but. <laughs> Can you say that again? <coughs> oh, just, um, any vegetables that grows on a tree or on, 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 on the ground. And then grains. So there are some, there's some, there's, you know, nowadays we have wheat, which has been highly, um, well, the, you know, the way the farming practices with growing wheat is so denatured and has been moved, removed from like, natural farming practices um, that's in line with the earth and the nature and the ecology of the earth. And so a lot of times certain grains, wheat is definitely one of them, um, certain grains are not producing the the every, all the components of that grain that's supposed to be in integrity. It's not not it's not there as much. It's actually creating all these other kinds of processes that really for the human body for the human consumption can be hard for the body because we're also nature. We're part of nature. We're an extension of nature, right? Mm -hmm. And so the human body recognizes it as foreign. Okay, and so if we are consuming something that the human body is recognizing as foreign, guess what? Our body is designed to do, right? It's designed to go after something that's foreign and react and respond and try to get rid of it. And in that process of trying to get rid of something that the body recognizes as foreign, it creates these inflammatory chemicals. And again, basically what that means is that food then becomes inflammatory to the human body. Even though that food itself the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it is not inflammatory. Do you see what I mean? But because of our commercial, industrial farming practices, it has become inflammatory. Does that make sense? And that applies to corn too, right? Mm -hmm. corn mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. corn. Um, so anything that's been genetically modified. So goodbye to bread. There no, really there's all kinds of other breads that you can still make that still taste awesome and actually more nutrient dense and more healthy mm -hmm. for the body Good. than the wheat bread. So there's no like organic, organic mm -hmm. Even if it's organic, the, the, so organic refers to certain class of farming practices. It doesn't always refer to the seed itself. So the, the, there's a whole industry around organic. You know, it's that's another mm -hmm. workshop with another, another two-hour conversation on that. But uh, um, the so so we want it to be organic, and we also want it to be genetically modified, free free of you know, GMOs, basically. Does that make sense? These are the good grains then. Great question. <laughs> Let's focus. OK. So here, um, I'll hold it up. So if you guys can't see, just let me know, and I'll hold it up light. Or maybe I'll pass it up. Don't open these. OK, don't open these. <laughs> so here are the super grains. You have my favorite ones to work with, and I, I actually recommend. If, you're gonna, if you haven't worked with this, start here. Okay, start with quinoa, and start with buckwheat. 
just start there. Those are easier to work with. Mm -hmm. like the test how, way. Do you, how do you spell quinoa? Quinoa. Quinoa. I'll pass this around so you'll see it. Oh. Okay? The round, little round one is quinoa, and the little red one is quinoa too, because there's three different kinds that we usually get from the store. And then the little heart shaped one, that's my favorite grain actually. It's real fluffy and it's real hearty and it's just buttery and it's mmm, you know? And it's called buckwheat. Okay. Um, and then this one has millet too. The millet, millet is pretty good too. Um, millet has a little bit more of a rougher texture. Um, more like couscous almost. Okay. It's like couscous, right? Yeah. So just, you know, look at it. You're going to see, I mean, it's got amazing nutrients. You know, brown rice and rice, ri white rice, first of all, is okay. But it doesn't have much fiber. It's all starch. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to give our body a lot of fiber. The fiber will help to extract fat and lipid cells from our body, toxicity from our body. It will help to, you know, cleanse out your system. It will help to pull out the ash that we talked about. It helps to pull mm -hmm. that out. So anything that has fiber, guess what? All of this food has high fiber. So we want to eat more of that. Okay, so this stuff has a lot of fiber. If you look at here, anything that has uh, two or more grams of fiber, it's a complete fiber. Oh my God. So here, yeah, you can pass this out.
you will graduate to that eventually. Okay, so yes, so the class of nutrients that you're looking for in your food, okay, on a daily basis, we want some sort of probiotic that will help us with our immune system. You want enzymes. You want minerals and vitamins and antioxidants. These are the nutrients. Any food that you eat, you want to ask these questions. Hey, does this, does this meal have a lot of enzymes and probiotics and minerals? Is it high nutrient dense foods? When foods are nutrient dense, it leaves behind less ash and actually gives our body the nutrients that it needs. So you want to also have things like for this, we talked about this too. You talked about the thyroid, which is connected to our hormonal system and our metabolism. In the hormonal system, we want things like maca. Does anybody ever heard of maca? Okay. It's a root. It's uh, mm -hmm. indigenous to Latin America, but it comes up. It's a uh, it's a root. Basically, they just grind it up the root into a powder, and it's a superfood. It's got all these minerals. Um, like a potato? You mean like a like a potato? You mix it in with either a, um, like a smoothie, okay, or you just mix it in with your water, with your green powder, and you shake it up, and you can just drink it throughout the day. It's easy. You know? Sometimes I make a soup, and I drop it in my soup, and I bring it up. It has a nutty taste, like a real nutty, like a thick nut, you know? Super fruit blend, so foods that are really nutrient dense are the foods that you want to have in your body on a regular daily basis. If you're eating food that's not nutrient dense, guess what? What are the foods that are not nutrient dense? That we eat on a regular basis. What are they? Cakes, okay. What else? What are foods that are not nutrient dense that we eat on a regular basis as a society? Sugar. Soda, pizza, um, bread, crackers, cookies. What else? Wait, what is the question? What are the foods that we're eating as a society that's not nutrient dense on a regular basis? Bagels. Bagels. Bagel. Starch. Muffins. 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 Muffins.
we don't realize this, but you know, we say red meat is the worst meat, um, and then chicken and then seafood. Well, the really this thing that we say, oh, it's not as bad or it's much healthier. You're really looking at minuscule change. You know, um, there's a I have a whole another presentation. The um, there's only like a 10% difference. And so, well, between chicken and red meat. Okay, so, but the chicken still has a lot of cholesterol. It's still acidic, you know. Yes, red meat is 10% better, but you know, 10%, really? I mean, is that really that big of a difference? Yeah? So, the question is, you want to start to, it doesn't matter, chicken, beef, whatever you choose to eat in terms of animal protein goes, is cool, but even with all of that, you want to keep it to 20%. Anything, and not just meat, but like if you're doing dairy or if you're doing any of the toxic stuff, the refined sugar, the refined breads, the refined rices, all of those are more acidic. So all of this combined, 20% or less, is, is where the, the, um, the recommendations are for the body to maintain. Okay, so the way I do it is I, so I will, Make a meal, and in my meal, I will look at okay, what percentage of this meal is acidic or you know, Like, if I know that I am making, like for me, it's like a big bowl of beans and a big bowl of salad, like to me, that's really mainly alkaline already. You know? So, that meal for me is alkaline. Yeah, I don't have to worry about the acidity of that. Now, if I'm using, say, I'm making, I don't eat bread, but if I did, then I know that bread would be. The acidic item on a plane, and that's cool still, right? Because I'm still eating beans and salad, and then a little bit of something that's acidic. Mm -hmm. it's, now not, it's not, the vast majority of my meal isn't. And so, in that way, you can start to plan your meals. Like, what percentage of my meal is more alkaline? And what percentage is so, acidic? if you put anything with a uh, olive oil or uh, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon and uh, a lemon squeeze, you know, mm -hmm. does that make it acidic or it's still alkaline? So lemon is highly, highly alkaline, actually. Highly, highly alkaline. Yeah. So when we're looking at the ash, mm. you see, when, when we talk about acid and alkaline, we're not talking about the food itself. We're talking about the ash it leaves behind in our bloodstream. Mm. Okay. So the food, on the food category, what, okay, the way we say it is, you know, citrus is acidic. We're not talking about that definition. It's a totally different definition. Okay. Do you, do you understand that? You're talking because about the residue that is left? Exactly. Yeah. The more residue something it leaves behind. So even though the taste is acidic, we're not talking about the taste. We're talking about the, the residue it leaves behind in our bloodstream. Okay. So, so the fat, like mm -hmm. olive oil. If you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes, anything that is fatty is not going to be helpful to you reversing your conditions. If you have digestive challenges, um, ulcers, you know, fiber is highly necessary. Mm -hmm. Diabetes also, um, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, I mean all that. So high fiber is the key. And the eating foods that are like this is the key. Um, Who knows what means this? Siri. Siri, yes, okay. There's all kinds of Siri in the seaweed out there. There's kelp, there's kombu, there's salt, there's tzatziki. You want to eat more seaweed. You know, when we human beings, when we evolved back in the day, so probably hundreds of years ago, you know, we lived closer to the water, we were in and out of the land, we had a lot of seaweed and algae in our system. You know, nowadays we don't, uh, because we're eating commercial food. But nowadays, more and more companies are packaging seaweed and selling them to us. Um, and this adults is my favorite, it tastes the most pleasant. You can just you can just cut it up and add it to your salad. It's just fish. It tastes a little fishy, not, not too much. You can take um, blended vegetables and drop in blended seaweed and make it taste like, like um, Okay, here's, this is what I recommend. For everybody in this room, okay, for all of us, there's only really, out of everything that I'm introducing you to today, there's really just three things that you want to focus on before I see everybody benefiting from. This is a chia seed. You guys have heard about flaxseed? Yeah. 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 Okay. So who's who's flaxseed? Who's is a, is a consuming flaxseed on a regular basis? 
probiotics are great for your digestive health. You know, we talked about the environment in our body. Probiotics are necessary. Great. And guess what? 80%, who knows this? Who is? 80% of your immune system is connected to what? Your gut. Your gut. Listen. All right. Here, I'm going to start with <laughs> All right. So, so not digestive huh? Not digestive Yeah, 80% gut is the digestive So I said the answer, and I didn't get any. <laughs> 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 you heard me, right? Okay, one, two. There you go. No, no, I want hers. Hers. I'm just joking. I'm trying to find it. Okay, so you're right. So the probiotics, you're going to hear more and more about this in the next year or so. There's a lot of research that are coming out about probiotics, the importance, the critical importance of probiotics, especially because we live in a society that's been so highly sanitized, our food are sanitized with, you know, whatever, like, pesticides and stuff like that, and we're eating packaged foods, so we're not getting the herb, and so it helps yeah. to get supplements oh, like this or the mega that has probiotics in it. I, on top of this, on top of my green powder, on top of my mega, I still take a probiotic supplement. That's exclusive. I believe that's part of the reason why I'm so high. Okay, this is the vitamin C. Who is, oh, okay. yeah. oh wait, not yet, go ahead. Okay. This is vitamin C. Are, are, are you guys taking vitamin C? Once yeah. a one. <laughs> no, we eat, we eat oranges. Yep. You eat yeah. oranges. That's good. That's good. Because we uh, like the natural. The, the thing about oranges is that I like biryani. I was going to say that another reason that we should take probiotics is because because of all the um, things that we eat, we have an overgrowth of something called candida in the system, and that can cause like yeast infections and like uh, another um, reason is we need to take antibiotics too that kill the healthy bacteria. So you have to like take probiotics for that. Absolutely. Yes. There's so many reasons. There's so much. Everything that I'm discussing with you guys today, there's so many reasons of why I'm only sharing like five percent of the reasons. We don't have enough time to get into all the reasons. Probiotics are now. There's a, there are yeah, hundreds of different kinds of probiotics. And our body needs hundreds of different kinds of probiotics. It's a very complex world. Um, there's like a whole environment. This, they say this is like the forest of the body. You know how forest has different trees, has different pla um, plants, it has you know, all these different kinds of vegetation. Well, the flora of our gut also needs a diversity of different you know, flora, basically, you know, and the different organisms here, and different organisms, just like cells, different cells do different things, different probiotic, different good bacteria does carry out different things in our body, okay, so that's why, um, that's why you'll see in some of these back of the bottles, it has all these, like, 100 billion or, or a billion or a million kind of different probiotics. Vitamin C, especially if you're traveling, all of us, you know, I always carry this when I, whenever I travel, especially because when we're traveling, when you're in the plane with hundreds of people, you're being exposed, and we're being exposed, and we're, we're breathing Cold. in that same Cold. air that so everybody else is breathing in, and you don't know how many people have what kind of sickness, right? So vitamin C is really important when you're traveling, and in general, if your immune system is already, you know, it's not functioning at its best. You want to you want to supplement with vitamin C. Vitamin D is also very important. You choose. You want to do one that's like food grade. Another synthetic grade. So any supplement, guys, really anything. Chemicals are acidic. Period. Chemicals, anything, chemical foods, chemical supplements, chemical whatever is acidic. So you want to do a food grade, and you can. Yeah. Okay, now 
are we anybody dealing with um, sugar yeah. insulin issues? No. Right. no. Okay. Instead of using Splenda, instead of using, I don't know what kind of sweeteners they have out there that are chemical based, and of course not using sugar, right? Use stevia. Okay, it, it tastes fine to me. I use it for the, you know, stevia. Stevia? Stevia. Yeah, you can pass this around. It's a sweetener, it's a natural sweetener, <coughs> and it does not spike your blood sugar. Can I, uh, so can I ask you something? Not, honey spikes your so blood sugar. So 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 this, this, this is what? only if you put in the water. No, you can do it in many ways. You can put it in your muffins. If you make a muffin with quinoa or muffin with flour, it's sweet. And, 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 and it is going like that? Uh, it expands with water, uh -huh. so it's going to get a little ball, like little ball. This is what they use yes, sometimes yes. in the muffins. They use, yes. yes, this is good yes. for this is good for urine and acid. This is it's good for everything. It's got a lot of minerals. It's got omega threes, high fiber. What about brown sugar? Light brown if it's, sugar. If it's like real brown sugar yeah. and not Light like brown. sugar in the rock, because that's still refined and it will Light. still spike your blood sugar. Which one? Light brown sugar? Mm -hmm. No, that will yeah. spike your blood sugar. It's not diabetic. 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 It's Honey still spikes. Honey yeah. still high sugar. But the same with no, the, 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 the brown sugar that's on the market is not yeah. real brown sugar. Right. Right. And it's it's not real. But here's the thing. Sugar is not an issue with diabetes. I want to take a picture. So I got The issue with the people with diabetes is that there isn't enough fiber coming in into the body, which then when you eat anything else that has lack in fiber, it spikes the blood sugar. But if you start to eat food with a high fiber, it will slowly release all the carbohydrates that are in there. It will slowly release, which is when it turns into sugar, basically, right? Yeah. So it's, that, it's making sure you have high fiber so that it slows down the release of the sugar in your, into your bloodstream. Does that make sense? I want to ask you a question. I have a whole series on diabetes we can do on the through stuff if you want to. No, no, no. Hold it, hold it. Anybody? I saw some help. Okay, about some of this, uh, like the powder, the things. What I would tell is my considerable amount of it is like processing and the and I don't know what sometimes it is not clear like some of them when reinforce some of the okay, okay. stuff like the bowser so none of these none of these things that I have here so all all these things are just dry then grounded yeah all sticky she's here I don't want to get sugar sand exactly and once there are there are those products where they add chemicals or some kind of items, I still stay away from them. So you can tell from the outside it's all natural. Not only natural, you want to look for certain. You definitely want to look for. You want to look for. She's smart. Show her how to play. We also want to avoid gluten. I want to play. You know? Yeah, I know. 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 Um, really, you want to start to look at the actual ingredient list that's in the back, and as long as you can pronounce those I things, want to take a you look at the back. So yeah, you're right. I mean, um, you don't want to consume anything that sounds like a chemical. Yeah, I can't eat. So there's a lot of products out there. Can I try that one? Can I try that one? It's a refined product or it's a refined product. And for blood pressure? Oh, cool. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys. Sister Matilda, you have one more question. And then I'm going to step it down. For blood pressure? Can I ask you a question? You know, for biotics, they say a lot about different kinds, and some of them are done for commercial use, and many people buy it and they're already dead. Yes. You know, I mean, so yes. how do we know which one you buy? Yes. Go back, yes. You know, Selection go back. is important. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. Think so about the vitamin C and all these absolutely. things. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Um, Can I ask you a question? You just, you, as you start to get the point of the
there's going to be learning to her. You know, well, we can't discuss all the answers today, but there is, there are different companies that are good to go. There are companies that are good to go. Hi. I want to ask you, I had some um, diet program and they said even stevia has sugar. Even stevia. Yes, so some companies, again, manufacture, okay, companies, some companies. So which one you suggest the stevia because they cannot have sugar? It's blowing yes. me. So you want to, again, so we want to start to look at the label in the back and make sure that it's 100% natural. There's no other Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So again, trusted companies. Companies that you trust, there will be companies you don't want to trust. Yeah, because they said even stevia, you have to be careful with stevia. Yeah. Well, the packaging, the company, is yeah. what we have to be careful. But the stevia itself, if you find a company that only has stevia, then you're good to go. Okay. So it's not the stevia that's the issue, it's the company's packaging. You have to wait, make sure. Okay. Yes. Well, that goes with everything. That goes with every product we discuss. You have to really make sure it's zero uh, sugar. Yes. Okay, so are you guys ready to have some smoothie? Yay! Who knows about the super greens? Super green. Yes. Broccoli. Kale. Broccoli. Broccoli is great for what? Do you know? Heart. Heart. Don't be crazy, but heart because it has a great fiber. Anything that has fiber is great for the heart, great for cholesterol, great for diabetes. Cholesterol. But broccoli is most number one benefit of broccoli. Okay, this goes for every. It has. It has to be a row. It has to be a row. Broccoli. No, it does not. Okay. Um, <laughs> broccoli is an excellent, it's actually a better source of you, are you, are you calcium. Yeah, it's the best source of calcium. Okay. And so women, if we're dealing with bone density, or really anybody dealing with bone density issues, are you okay? or mm -hmm. you are a growing child, you know, we want to, broccoli is a great way, <laughs> and a great food to add in on a regular <coughs> daily basis. Okay. I said a serving of broccoli every day. But kale, this is kale, you guys know kale? Yeah. Anybody not work with kale yet? What do you say? Is this a salad or something? It's salad? It looks like yes, a salad. If you a salad, you yeah. put it in a smoothie, you could turn it into a dish, casserole, whatever you like. Um, but I made this like this. Yeah. And I made this with a smoothie. Um, all right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start our smoothie demo. So what I'm going to show you today is going to be not just any smoothie, but how do you make a smoothie that's nutrient-dense, power-packed? Who's drinking dairy milk on a regular basis? If you're somebody who's drinking dairy milk, cow or green or whatever they market these days, you, that's acidic to the body. Once in a while, no big deal. I like that. But if you're somebody who loves milk, and you drink it every day, like a piece of milk every day, your immune system is riding low. If you want to start to take your immune system a little bit higher, you want to switch over to coconut milk, almond milk, <laughs> hemp milk, hazelnut milk. I mean, the list goes on and on these days because more and more people are starting to move away from dairy because it's so acidic. But I like the baby. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I, do, I do coconut milk. And yes, sometimes I do almond milk. There's flax milk as well. Um, almond? The almond, almond milk sorry. is fine. And you put one percent and two percent and like that? It's good. Um, well, this is already plant-based, so it's already low fat. No, the, the milk. The daily milk. The one percent. It doesn't matter. It's all acidic. Okay. It's all oh, acidic. Um, um, cheese, anything that's dairy is acidic. Cheese also? If you look in your chart, does everybody have a little chart? Your acid alkaline? You can start to look in there. <laughs> okay, so how do you, who knows? Okay. How do you make a smoothie power pack? Power pack smoothie. Power so power 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 power. Power. Okay, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I want to hear from somebody who hasn't spoken. You have somebody new. How do you make a smoothie power pack? Okay. 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 Okay.
So give yourself that grace period. Okay, so this is my Vega powder, which I am adding in here. This has, you know, what's the, the Vega one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three. Yeah. I added three huge tablespoons. Vega powder. Yeah. Um, what else should I add in here for you guys today? Um, I would normally add some flaxseed, but I didn't bring any. So you can't add them? Vega powder? Or shaka? Huh? You can't add shia or vegetable powder? I can't. I want to return those. Oh, sorry. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll add some. I'll, 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 I'll use some. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. Now, guys, if you are doing your coffee or your juices and your muffins, you're buying those anyways, right? You're buying and you're spending money on acidic things that are what? Creating inflammation in your body. So you might as well just buy these. It's going to give you long term health. Hey, can you open this? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and this is okay. So again, yogurt. nowadays there's yogurt that are made with coconut milk, almond milk. So you can just see um, what all they have in there. So this one is made with almond milk. So I'm going to add some of that because it's going to give us a little bit of creamy, a little bit more creamy. Where do you find this? At the health food store, mm -hmm. but even like I said, some of the regular oh, sorry, yeah, they're yeah. starting to carry them. So, so you just have to kind of ask your local store. You can drop in an apple if you want it. You know, apple and celery taste great together. Mm -hmm. You know, but I st I keep it pretty simple. You know, so this way you don't have to get all overwhelmed by it. So I'm sort of a green. Kale greens, spinach greens do great on smoothies. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, so I'm going to drop in a few tablespoons. All right, and then we have our milk. Some ice would be good. Can you have ice machine? No, it's not working. Oh, no, and fish might not. Okay, so that's it, okay? Easy? Greens, some fruit, some milk. Huh? Very easy, right? And then yeah. flaxseed. Ideally, you would add a couple of tablespoons of flaxseed. What about like quinoa or chia or something? Yes, that you could do as well. I'm not going to do it because I want to return those. Okay. <laughs> um, and then green powder. You could also do that. You can drop in a teaspoon of your vitamin C powder as well. 
you know, maca. You can drop that in, like a, a teaspoon. Start with a teaspoon because it's got a strong nutty flavor. Um, so th this right here, drop in these powders. I mean, powders are excellent for your smoothies. You drop all of it in and you'll get it in for your breakfast you added or some for water? your snack. You added some water? I added the, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I may add some water if it needs it. And can I get a volunteer? A volunteer? You want a cup? Well, actually, let's, let's. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Okay, so ready guys? Let's make this work. basically okay you don't have to avoid fruit completely because fruit still has fiber and you're adding the veggies that have fiber so it will help you to release the sweet that's in your smoothie a lot slower into your bloodstream and that's the key is how you know if we're consuming things like muffins you know that's just all refined flour it's gonna it's gonna break down in our blood sugar a lot faster it's gonna spike in so you're going to give us a little taste and tell us. I haven't even tasted much. I should probably taste it first. Let me taste it first. All right, so I'm going to thin this up so it can be easier to serve. Hold on. Do all of you guys want a little sample? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want a sample? <laughs> All right, so, all right, quiz time. What are some of the, you were asking about some superfoods. What are some other superfoods you want to have as staples in your kitchen all the time? We talked about what? What are the superfoods that you want to have? Nutrient dense foods. Quinoa, what else? Brown rice. Oh, Maca. 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 Uh -huh. I thought you were about to say Okay. <laughs> Who can tell me a list of five? Who can tell me a list of five? Who can tell me a list of five? Somebody's going to give us. List of five superfoods that you want to have in your fridge, in your kitchen, on a regular basis. Meat and chicken and fish. <laughs> five alkaline superfood, nutrient dense foods that are going to help you to bring up your immune system, regulate your digestive system. The actual name of the food. So, maca is one. 
But I need five. I need five from yeah. one. The person. seaweed. Yeah. Seaweed. Okay, two. Yeah. No, you already got a tree. Okay. Do you mind? <laughs> I gave it away. I was beans. just teasing you when I talked about the beans. Tree. <laughs> no, beans. Beans are yeah. great beans food, and beans. but it's not a super food. Yeah. yeah. Beans, are, but it's good though. <laughs> seaweed is. Seaweed. Seaweed. What else? Yeah. Nice. And uh, guys, no, you missed the workshop. No. <laughs> and, uh, what is the name? Is uh, we 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 forgot the name. The seeds. We we seeds. Chia seeds. Chia seeds. No, we uh, this one the brown. This. Yeah. No, no. Bakui. Bakui. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. We don't know. So. So how is it? Really good. I like that. You like that? Okay. Good. Um, what else? Algae. We talked a little bit about algae. Let, let me ask. Kale. I can ask questions. So we don't have to cook. Just make this juice and that. There you go. Yes, it's that easy. <laughs> no. Healthy food. Is healthy life is actually very no, easy. No, if you have the right food, that's all it matters. It's no, making sure. Uh, no, bechamel. You know, like. Oh, good. It is good. Good. Huh? Oh, okay. So, so you don't have to have this blender, but this is a considered to be a high power blender. You can do amazing things with it if you do have it. We can make smoothies like this, of course. You can make gazpachos, you can make soups, uh, hummus. Um, yes. Spreads, nut cheeses. How about you know? food? How about what? Food. 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 Yeah, food. 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 You know, turmeric powder. Um, you definitely want to have turmeric on a regular basis. Yeah, anti inflammatory. It's an anti inflammatory. It goes directly. It has an anti inflammatory effect on our body. So, a teaspoon a day. It's minimal. It's minimal. You could go even a tablespoon a day. You can never have enough turmeric, basically. So, you can drop in some turmeric. <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, we can have a talk about parts. Oh, yes, great. Okay, so we got a question on acid reflux, heartburn. Okay, a lot of that is literally the body is crying out. It's saying the body is too acidic. Okay. And that's why we're getting the acid coming up. You know, what's going on is that okay. the body, that's the body's way of saying the body is too acidic. You know, I mean, all these conditions we talked about, these are all acidic, inflammatory conditions. But the, the, what's going on is that there is two reasons why we have acid reflux. Either the, the necessary digestive acids that we need in our body is either too low, Okay, and so when we start to eat yeah. acidic foods, it takes over and it, it just doesn't get processed. And so it stays right there in the esophagus and stomach area. And so when we lay down or when you're living out throughout your day, your body's just regurgitating and it doesn't want to process it. Okay, and so one of the ways to get rid of that is first stopping the acidic foods, you know, or minimizing them, and then starting to eat more alkaline. Thank you. you know, and you're going to start to see you have less and less acid reflux. I know that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's still a little bit. Yeah, I know. We don't like yeah. it. Okay, yeah. Great. It's pretty good. Okay, so guys, I want to thank you. You guys have been wonderful. Who, who, what, was, what did you enjoy learning most? So we have to. to <laughs> Slowly, yes. Yes, I mean, I mean, if you, it depends on you. You know, where is your goal? Right? We have more and more. I have a question. Uh -huh. where, where does the protein in the diet come from? Your 
we're getting enough protein right, because we talked about it. Were you here? Quinoa. Quinoa is complete protein. Chia seeds are complete protein. So when you start to eat these kind of foods, you're getting enough protein in your system. Another thing that's going on is that we live in a country where there's an over uh, marketing of, of animal protein. So we're actually consuming, they, I think the research says that we're consuming about 60% more protein in this country than, we, than our body can really handle. And it's spilling over to all of these other chronic conditions that we experience, especially like diabetes, high blood pressure, and cancer. Okay, the, these conditions are all connected to overabundance of acidic protein coming into our body. And so um, there's this whole misunderstanding, the overmarketing of that we need, you know, this much protein. We really don't. The body can't actually thrive at its best with so much protein, animal protein. Yeah. So you're getting enough, and you're getting a high quality source of protein by eating this one. That that smoothie that you have in your hand has great protein. For that little bit amount, it probably has about four grams of protein in it. So yeah. So guys, thank you so much, brothers and sisters. It's been lovely. That, you know, like a cucumber and peach and pineapple will go great, you know, but a celery and a pineapple will go great, but celery and peach and pineapple, or I mean a banana, right? A banana and a celery will not do good. So, but.